Corey, work on that first priority is already underway. Right, Andre, Devin, we heard several times tonight from uh, state and federal officials even that the number one priority right now is clearing that channel, pulling the key bridge out from the Patapsco River. Another thing we learned tonight is that the request for millions of federal dollars was granted and approved. On clearing the channel and opening the vessel traffic to the port, I've said it before. I will say it again, and I will keep on saying it. This is not just about Maryland. This is about the nation's economy. $60 million of federal funds coming to Baltimore for mobilization, operations, and debris recovery efforts following the Key Bridge collapse. We want to be clear that this is just a down payment, the $60 million. It is not the final payment. All to help what state and federal leaders are calling a priority right now, getting the port back up and running. The U.S. Coast Guard says this will be done in steps. First, they'll clear debris from the channel, then remove the cargo ship before removing the rest of the bridge debris from the water. Cranes are on their way to do that. One arrives later tonight, another should arrive on Saturday. But before we can actually engage in lifting, we've got to complete the assessment process of the bridge and the pieces of the bridge are in the water so that we can figure out how to cut the bridge into the right size pieces so that we can actually lift them with the crane. The Army Corps is moving the largest crane in the eastern seaboard to Baltimore to help us. And it's estimated that that will arrive later on this evening. We also asked the governor about the potential hazmat leak the NTSB is documenting. He says 14 containers on the dolly that were damaged or involved in the crash contain things like soap, perfume, and resin material. They are monitoring the water and air. So far, they say no indication of any threat. The governor says they have what they call a boom in the water and around the ship to collect anything coming off of it. But we specifically asked about the sheen the NTSB spotted on the waterway. The sheen that I think has been reported, I think has to do with uh, a, there's a bow thruster on the front of the ship that allows the ship to normally move to port or starboard as it's coming into port, approaching a dock, et cetera. There's some oil associated with that bow thruster, and we think there were roughly 80 liters of oil in that area. And so we think that's really where the sheen's coming from, but our ability to get directly underneath that is really too dangerous. And to be clear, when I mentioned booms there, the booms that are in the water, they are essentially water barriers there to collect anything possibly coming off of the ship. Now, the governor could not give a timeline for all of this. His quote exactly, his words were, it's going to be a long, complicated process, but rest assured, they will get this done. Live in Dundalk tonight, I'm Tori Orgi, WBAL TV 11 News. Deb Andre. Tori, thank you. Mm -hmm. And just as important as the commerce, really, the community sure. and the people affected range from those who lost work to those who lost loved ones. Yeah, 11 News anchor Jason Newton continues tonight's coverage from the live desk. And Jason, there's a huge outpouring of help tonight. Yeah, and listen, every person who spoke tonight made note of the lives changed this week. And while the physical will certainly be a heavy lift, the emotional, the occupational, the monetary carry about the same weight. Tonight, Governor Moore addressed the 8,000 dock workers directly affected by the collapse. He says the needs on the job and now at home for those workers is great and the state they're working to help them. The Maryland Department of Labor now has established a hotline for unemployment insurance for workers affected by the collapse. I've also appointed an administration liaison to work with the families of the victims in their time of need and letting them know we are going to be here for them and with them. Uh, here's that hotline number. It's 667-930-5989. We'll keep that up for the remainder of the story. Meanwhile, Mayor Brandon Scott saying the city is also working to help families affected. The Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs has set up a fund uh, through the Civic Fund to provide assistance to those directly impacted and is facilitating connections with local community-based organizations who are providing direct support in case management, crisis support, and mental health to the families. Of support in the region, Baltimore County Executive Johnny Oshesky acknowledging tonight most families affected reside in his county. He too is offering assistance. Baltimore City Schools offering mental health care options to its staff and families and students as well. Again, 
for that number, the unemployment assistance number through the State Department of Labor. It's 667-930-5989.